Elders Forum, MEF, has said states are playing politics with a number of people testing positive for COVID-19 in order to get more grants from the federal government and foreign donors. The forum noted that what the country needs are good policies and facilities that will protect the citizenry and that the country can turn things around with the current resources available if employed in a transparent and professional manner. They also share concerns about developments in Kano State, just as the state's task force uh, committee on COVID-19 say it will soon publish the pictures of two remaining patients who fled after testing positive in order to ensure they are arrested and brought to isolation center for treatment. Still with us is Rotimi Asakore, a journalist, development and policy uh, expert. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, um, we have uh, Debo Adeniro, Executive Chairman, Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. Let, let's hope we can uh, reconnect with Mr. Sakure a little later. But let's just get things uh, started. Now, the forum refers to the appearance of attempts by many state governments to play politics um, with numbers um, for what appears to be expectations that more funds will come uh, to them. Do you actually agree with this position um, of the Norton elders? Thank you. From all the indications, it shows that uh, the states are playing politics with it, with the COVID-19. Uh, the claims that they make uh, uh, look bogus. And as a matter of fact, there have been uh, accusations and uh, counter accusations that several uh, uh, government hospitals register regular patients as a COVID 19 patient. And that is to show up the number that they will claim in their states that they have as um, uh, those to be taken care of. Uh, there is no reason why uh, the pandemic couldn't have been nipped in the bud uh, when the index cases were identified and their contact uh, persons were traced. And all of these contact persons were said to have been identified and quarantined. And many of them were released you know, uh, as those who don't have the disease. Are, are these some then, of the appearances that they seem to be referencing you're trying to explain? Um, the people living the isolation centers? Yes. Many of those that are living the isolation centers are supposed to be those contacts that have been traced, you know, from the index cases that they got in most of those states. And Lagos State ought not to have that number that they are banding all about. But they needed to justify the humongous amount of money that they claim they have expended on it from the coffers of Lagos State and that donation that came in from the private sector and the other largest that the federal government, you know, uh, uh, remitted to Lagos to take care of the COVID. Again. But when you look at the volume of money that has gone down the drain in the guise of uh, building isolation centers, buying uh, personal protective equipment, taking care of the medics, you see that it is not commensurate with the services that have been delivered. So much money has gone down the drain and uh, the state uh, owe us the duty to account for every penny that they have taken. That is why they needed more patients by hook or by crook. Uh, several, several allegations that uh, people, I mean, for example, on Facebook this afternoon, I read that somebody went to General Hospital with uh, a head injury. And the label he uh, received as a COVID-19 uh, 303. As but but how is all this, so, um, let, me, let me interject and ask, how is all this possible, considering the fact that all the announcements of positive cases come from the Nigeria CDC? How are they missing it? 
How are the not, governors manipulating these results? Well, it is what they present to the uh, NCDC that NCDC announces out. Not that NCDC uh, 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 identified these patients. If anybody reports at the general hospital and they refer him to isolation center, it becomes another number to be added to the existing one. And you know these numbers are cumulative. So uh, both those who have been discharged, those that are just coming in, and those that are on treatment are calculated together. And uh, patients cannot just grow from air. I mean, they cannot just descend from air they have to be identified by doctors and medics uh, that work for the legal state. I mean, for each of the states that are involved. That is the way they get these uh, numbers that they add up. There is, uh, because there hasn't been mass te testing in Nigeria, I wonder how they came about the figures that they are banding about. Okay, and, let, let, uh, let, me, let me clarify something. Yes. If you yes. say they are brandishing uh, some of these figures, um, yes. are you saying that we do not have um, COVID-19 cases or that the figures are unnecessarily being increased? I, I need to clear that before we go forward. The figures are bloated up to okay. justify the amount of money they claim they have sunk into it. Many of these states behave as if they didn't have government hospital before the COVID thing came up. They, they, they give an impression that it is when uh, the COVID-19 came to Nigeria that they started building facilities for it and acquiring equipment and materials they used. That is unrealistic. So we are asking every government, every state government, every local government, to show us the names, the figures, and the medical reports of all of these uh, uh, so-called patients of COVID-19 so, that they are bandishing all about. One, one would actually are say... not convinced. Yeah. One would, yeah. I mean, from what you're saying, one would say, yeah. if indeed these governors are doing what you allege, it implies yes. that they are morally bankrupt and not in the right frame of, um, I mean, moral standing to be leaders of a people who are yearning for leadership? Of course, yes. Uh, we know that many government functionaries in Nigeria are morally bankrupt. And that is the reason why we are experiencing the rot in different sectors of our national life. If they are not bankrupt, why should we have uh, spent over uh, one trillion naira in one state in two years and you do not see good hospital anywhere? The hospitals that you see are not well equipped. The, the ones that are private are not allowed to treat certain category of uh, patients. And when you go there, this, the, the, the cost of it is uh, uh, out of the roof. So all, right. all of this add up to show that our government are not showing adequate you know, uh, commitment to the welfare and security of ordinary Nigerians. All right. And that is the problem we need to solve. And it cannot solve itself unless the masses of this country rise up to raise the necessary question that all of those who have been spending money on our behalf should be called out to give account of every cobo that Mr. they have uh, they have access to and they have expended on our behalf. Mr. Deniro, I, I have to interject now. I, I apologize. I have to interject because I'm told um, we've been able to establish, um, in spite of bad network, um, a Skype uh, connection with uh, Rotimi Sakuri. Um, we'll come back to you in a bit. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sakari, for uh, joining us again. Mm, thank you. All right, I, I'm not going to ask you um, the appearance of attempting to manipulate uh, figures at this time because we're, we're time uh, constrained. I'm just going to go straight to talk about the issue of accountability. Now, the forum... Um, said something about the Kanu state government needing to improve on its strategic uh, communication uh, strategies. 
Um, and it's also said they include higher level of openness with regards to causes of recent deaths and more effective means of convincing the public over the realities of the dangers that they face. Take that to add that to what we know that's going on. What is your take on the Kanu situation? <clears throat> the situation in Kanu goes beyond, beyond strategic uh, communication. <laughs> there is a public administration failure in Kanu, which is a big shame because, as I was just uh, remind, reminding some colleagues today, Governor Ganduje came to join us in UI in 1987 or 1988 to do his PhD in public administration. So he should know what he's doing. But sadly, he doesn't. He, you know, it's like he has no clue. You know, members of the COVID task force, are, they, are, they are positive. They are COVID-19 positive. That, uh, you know, scattered it. The, the lab got contaminated. That scattered it. Then they claim they don't know what is killing people. And to make matters worse, today of all days, the day after 80 cases were declared in Kano, he says he wants to relax the lockdown in Kano, in Kano of all places. You know? So really, it goes beyond strategic uh, communication. There's a strategic policy failure going on there with somebody as a gov governor who should actually know better. All right, and very still, quickly, still, still talking of, Kano, of manipulating um, figures. I, it's I'm, not possible. If some states don't have the capacity to ramp up their testing, if their capacity is low, they can't accuse other states of manipulating figures. All right, I, I really apologize to keep uh, botting in, but we need to capture uh, some other issues. I want to talk uh, to you about the task force saying that they are going to publish pictures of the uh, patients who ran away after testing uh, pos uh, positive. What do you make of this move, considering the fact that so far, even the NCDC has not really gone ahead to publish names and pictures of people who test positive? No, you shouldn't publish names and pictures of people that test positive unless they willingly come forward to say they tested positive. However, if people run away, if people run away and all, you know, possibility of finding them and convincing them to come back fails, you know, you contact their contacts, their family, their friends to urge them to come back and they are really sick and there is a big danger, then you may have to consider putting their names and pictures in the public domain. But under no circumstances should names and pictures of people who just merely test positive and, and are already in treatment centers be made public unless the people volunteer. For instance, like Governor El Rufai in Kaduna State or, or, any, or any other governor or Thank minister that, volun that volunteered the information. Thank you very much uh, for uh, the sustained effort to join us in spite of bad network. Thank you. All right, we uh, will put a last question uh, to Mr. Debo Adeniro. Um, your quick thought on the exploration uh, announced by the NCDC for, um, of home isolation. They are considering that as an option since we are out of bed space. Well, um, there's no way that uh, NCDC will not run out of bed space the way they admit uh, patients. Even those who have common flu, um, common cold, uh, those who have headaches and all of them are just uh, put together as if they have tested positive to COVID-19. Um, you saying private homes as isolation centers may not be like it because adequate or required hygiene um, may not be properly observed. Since government is not going to send their medics to monitor the progress of such a patient in his own house. Oh. And the, uh, those who are living with them will have uh, certain precautions to take because he's supposed to be isolated. They should not, they are not supposed to visit his room unless they want to give him food and some other things. And these people don't have personal protective gears All that right. they should protect themselves with. 
So it is not advisable. Thank what you we much. know is that government have enough resources. They have enough facilities. Look at the look 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 at the former national I mean uh, federal secretariat in Ikoyi. Why can't they convert that uh, gigantic edifice into isolation center? Several um, uh, buildings are rotting away here and there, which government can use. They shouldn't be I mean bring they shouldn't bring um, people with infectious diseases into dwelling houses because that will spread doom for uh, ordinary masses in this country. Mr. We Daniel, don't want to, yes. I don't think, yeah, okay, I was thinking you couldn't hear me. I'm afraid we will have to continue this conversation um, at a later date. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you too. I appreciate you for having me. God bless. Uh, right, we will take a plus report now, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Do stay with us. Following the collapse of an eight-story building in Oweri, the Imo State Deputy Governor, Professor Placid Njoku, has expressed dismay over the ugly incident. The Deputy Governor, who visited the scene of incident to ascertain the level of damage caused by the collapsed building, sympathized with the family of those who lost loved ones. Only two dead bodies confirmed from here since we arrived over uh, three hours ago. And... Uh, Nine plus two recovered alive. That's eleven are taking treatment at the hospital, but two confirmed dead. It is unbelievable, from what I hear, that somebody would develop a building like this without clear standards. The indication is that the developer does not have the authorization to develop a building like this. If this is proven to be true, government is going to be very, very upset. And frankly, this plot of land will naturally be revoked. If he has a seal on it, it must be revoked. I think that Imo State wants development, but we want organized development. We want legal development, not illegal development. We have a government, we have standards, we have institutions, and if we have to develop a project, we we'll go through the institutions and get appropriate authorization to do what we must do. And then we keep to standards. For somebody to develop such a, attempt to develop such a huge building without recourse to standards, recourse to the institutions of government that are responsible, is something that I think the law will have to ask questions. We will not tolerate illegality like this. And now we're hearing that human lives have been lost here. There are even more people trapped inside. It is Workers' Day, but these are grave times for workers and laborers world over. The daily death toll dampens the celebration of what began 130 years ago as a campaign for an eight-hour working day. My head bows in respect to our fallen comrades around the globe. In line with the International Labour Organization's four-pillar plan of policy response to the COVID-19 crisis, the Nigerian government has assured it will work to minimize job losses while discouraging employers from disengaging their staff without the prerequisite social dialogue we did also encourage workers to imbibe in presenting their demands. Workers indeed have a role, even as labor organizations work, asking world powers and governments for better conditions. They must, in the interim, make sacrifices, which would include accepting weight cuts and reasonable austerity measures to keep our economy going. Employers must work harder 
towards minimizing job cuts. We must all brace up for even more turbulent times ahead. Everyone must pitch in. We sink or we fly together. Thank you for watching Plus Politics. You can catch up on previous episodes. Check out our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and find the playlist for the program. Until next time, please be well.